What is up, bros? Anybody care to lax? Welcome back to the Crease Dive presented by Barstool Sports. I'm Jordy, and today we've got a solo sode coming up here for you. Uh, unfortunately, Robbie O couldn't make it uh, to this week's podcast, so you just got me on the mic. So it might be a little shorter than normal, but things might get a little awkward here and there. I mean, hey, listen, like you try getting on the mic just by yourself for, you know, however long and, you know, see if things don't go off the rails. It's a little difficult here, but. But, you know, fortunately for me, we have a shit ton of things to talk about today. So it's not going to get, uh, you know, too rambly here. And later on in the episode, we've got an interview with Mark Matthews coming up. Maybe you've heard of this guy before. You know, 2018 NLL MVP, not a big deal. Has won three out of the last four championships with the Saskatchewan Rush. Not a big deal. You also might remember him from his time at Denver, where he blessed the world with ridiculous highlights that have been on YouTube now, where you can spend hours upon hours upon hours of watching Mark Matthews just destroy defenders at college across. Uh, and he's been doing the same thing post collegiately, you know, so he's been ripping it up with Saskatchewan uh, in the NLL. So we'll talk to him about the season coming up here. And then we'll also talk about, uh, you know, a little bit about his plans this summer and where he'll be playing field across. Uh, so we got Mark Matthews coming up later in the episode. We also have finally it is here. Week one of the NLL season is here. We've got three games scheduled for this weekend. We've got the Buffalo Bandits at the Philadelphia Wings. We've got the New England Black Wolves at the Georgia Swarm. And we've got the Vancouver Warriors, not the Stealth, uh, playing against the Calgary Roughnecks. So those will be the first three games of the 2018-19 NLL season. If you're listening to this podcast, chances are you already knew that the first two weeks of the season were canceled due to a lockout. But hey, we all survived. We all made it out to the other side in one piece, or at least hopefully most of us did. Uh, so those first two weeks of the season, they're scratched. You know, guys use that for uh, training camp. You know, they got some scrimmages in. Now we're here. December 15th, week one of the NLL season is here. But before we even get to any games... We have another team to talk about here, another team thrown into the mix because it was announced earlier this week that the 13th franchise in the NLL was awarded to the state of New York and pro lacrosse is headed back to the Nassau Coliseum. Uh, yeah, so NLL going to New York, another expansion team. So if you've been keeping track over the last, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 or so months, I'm not that great with math, but, you know, anyone can flip through a calendar and tell you how long it's been. But if you've been paying attention for the last, you know, 12, 15 months, that is now four new teams added to the league. So, you know, 2017, 18 season, there were nine teams in the league, and you know now there's going to be 13. So at first, San Diego uh, was the first in, in this new expansion era. Following up the San Diego Seals, Philadelphia Wings coming back to town. Uh, so that's you know two expansion teams. Then this is where things get a little confusing, but you know so the Rochester Nighthawks are moving to Halifax. So technically, Halifax is a new city in the league, but they're not an expansion team because they're going to be the Rochester Nighthawks just moved to a new city and then replacing the Nighthawks in Rochester is going to be another team in Rochester. So that'll be the expansion team. So uh, kind of weird that Rochester is still going to have a team, but it's going to be an expansion team and Halifax is going to have a team, but they're not expansion, whatever. You're going to be confused about it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe your brain is a little bit better than I, than mine. And you can comprehend that better. Um, but yeah, so that's the case. So there's three teams and now the fourth in New York. Uh, now they don't have a name yet. I think anyone with like half a brain knows that this team needs to be called either the Saints, uh, you know, just because there's there's so much history with that name already. It's what the fans in that area are going to, uh, you know, connect with. Um, you know, the, the Saints are a staple of pro lacrosse. Uh, and, you know, if, if you don't go back to the Saints, you could also go right back to the to the New York Titans. Um, you know, I, I don't think that there was necessarily as much fanfare with the Titans as there were with the Saints, you know, considering that the Titans only had however long they had in New York before they went down to Orlando and then they go down to Orlando and, well, they're not in the league anymore. But so, I mean, the Saints, the Titans, 
makes sense, you know, but I, I think the NLL is going to probably end up going a, a different way with that one. I mean, if you checked out uh, the new website for this team in New York, they had a team survey or team name survey uh, for, you know, fans to, to put in their votes for. And, you know, obviously you could write in Saints or Titans or you could write in whatever the fuck you wanted to write in. You could write in the fucking dick slappers. Uh, but the the uh, options that they have right now are, uh, I think they, they went with the Riptide, which uh, you can't go, that's, that just conjures up bad memories of, uh, MLL expansion out to California and the LA Riptide RIP, uh, you know, fucking phenomenal uniforms. Uh, but that just didn't quite work out. They also had the New York force, which like, I don't know. That sounds like a, like a club softball team or some shit like that. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like you, you see like a, like a high school New York force softball team, or maybe like a, you know, maybe like a WNBA team or something like that. Like, no offense, WNBA. I mean, they're probably, um, you know, they might even be more popular than the NLL at this point, at least in the United States. But New York Force just, it doesn't sound like a lacrosse name. It sounds like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's pun a little bit intended here, but sounds kind of forced. Uh, then the third one was, uh, oh, so this one, uh, the New York Beacons. Now listen, like, I, I could be dumb. I don't know, but I don't, what the fuck is a beacon? Um, I, I need someone to explain that one to me. I have no idea what a beacon is. I'd have to Google it right now, but uh, I'm kind of my own host and producer and co-host at this point, so can't be doing too much Googling. But uh, yeah, if, if you know what a beacon is, let me know on Twitter because... I don't know. I see that, I think, Bacon, which like would be a good name. The New York Bacons. Maybe they could have, like, uh, you know, Kevin Bacon, uh, you know, so I... I would, Kevin Bacon actually a Philly guy, so I don't know if he'd probably be a Wings fan. So I don't know if that'll work. So sorry, New York, you cannot have Kevin Bacon from Philly. Uh, but yeah, so those were the three options that they went with. Uh, all of them, no offense, guys, but all of those fucking suck. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if uh, yeah, if you want, head over to their website and put in your suggested name for either the Saints or the Titans or anything else that like doesn't suck. Uh, but yeah, so now, uh, that's the fourth expansion team in the past, however, so many months, uh, you know, a year and some change. I think what people need to realize is that when we say that lacrosse is the sport of the future, we're not fucking joking. Like it's, it's like, there's like a little bit of a, a jokey tone to it, but we're not kidding. We're not fucking around here. Lacrosse is the sport of the future. That is four new teams playing professional lacrosse in the next couple of seasons. That What that means is that there are four extremely wealthy, extremely successful individuals or companies who have looked at the NLL, who have looked at professional lacrosse, and they said to themselves, yeah, this is where we're putting our money because we're going to make it all back and then some, and then we're going to be taking baths in money. We are going to be blowing our noses in money. We are going to be making so much money in professional lacrosse. And these are people who are smart and brilliant and rich. They're not you. They're not me. They're not fucking bozos on the internet comment section. These are people who know what they're doing in the business world. You know, these, uh, you know, you got Joe Sai. He's Alibaba. He's a fucking billionaire. And he says that lacrosse is where he wants to make some money with the San Diego Seals. You got Comcast. Listen, they fuck me over with my cable and internet bill every single month. But they don't make that money for no reason. They know what they're doing. Comcast is a fucking billion, billion dollar industry. They own the Flyers and now they own the Wings. You got Terry Pegula who owns like pretty much all of Buffalo. He's got another team in Rochester. And and now this, uh, you know, I don't know too much about the, the owners for this new team in New York. It's GF Sports. But listen, I mean, they paid millions of dollars for this team. They probably know what they're doing. And they know that lacrosse is where the money's at right now. So I think that that's, that's one of the biggest things um, that this expansion era in the NLL says to me is that there are smart, successful, wealthy people out there who are seeing professional lacrosse as a way to make money. Um, and at the end of the day, like that's really all they care about. These people just like, 
I don't think Comcast is like, hey, like, let's make sure that lacrosse grows. I think they're saying, hey, let's make sure that our pockets grow. Um, and listen, if, if the pockets grow, that means that the game's grown, though. So the two kind of go hand in hand. I think that the owners are a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more greedy about it, but like that's their job to be greedy. I mean, they put the money in, they want to get the money out. So, um, you know, that, that says a lot to me that there are so many new teams coming into the league right now. Uh, and this is only, you know, it might not be like just the tip of the iceberg. It might be like a little, little decent chunk, but there's going to be more and more expansion throughout these next few years here. The NLL has plans to, you know, kind of catch up with other major professional sports leagues. They want to get up to, you know, 30. Um, you know, I think that that 20 is a, is a pretty realistic goal to, to hit. And I think that they could probably hit that in, in a couple of years here. Um, you know, and then another thing with expansion that, uh, you know, that, that I think might worry some people is you know you're gonna get people saying things like oh well you know the talent level is gonna get watered down and, and it's gonna affect the product on the on the floor and to that just like shut the fuck up like if anyone if anyone's initial reaction about all this expansion in the nll is that the talent's gonna get watered down you're a fucking idiot because like listen this isn't like the nll only had nine teams last season all right so it's not like like let's say let's say the NHL, right? So they expand to Seattle in a couple years and that'll be 32 teams in the NHL. If they expanded any more than that, like they're adding another 23 guys to the NHL um and there's already 32 rosters full of those people. So like are there 23 other guys in the world, other hockey players in the world who are probably good enough to play in the NHL but aren't there yet? Yeah, like probably, but is there enough like legitimate super star power um, that you could really spread those guys around throughout the league to to make that work with you know thirty three or thirty four teams? Maybe not. Like maybe the talent would probably get watered down if you go past thirty two teams, but that's not the case in the NLL. Like there's only nine teams. Well, this year there's going to be eleven, and then next year there'll be thirteen. But like from last year to this year, there were only nine teams. So like that's not a ton of guys playing in the NLL. Like these rosters aren't massive. Like they don't have 53 guys on a team. Um, so like right off the bat, I mean, you think of like all the Canadians who just, there are only so many teams. There are already so many guys that just can't crack a roster to begin with just because there's, there's not a lot of opportunity there. So the amount of guys that, you know, these Canadians who just haven't been able to find themselves on an NLL roster, but they should be in the league. There's just not enough teams to roster all those people. So you have those guys. And then you have guys like, you know, you're going to see it this year. There's going to be a lot more Americans playing box. Um, you know, you got guys who have been doing it for a couple of years now. I mean, you, you got, you know, Joel White and, and uh, you know, like guys like Brett Manning. But then past couple of years, you've had Tom Schreiber, who's become one of the best players in the league. You got Kieran McCardle, who who rips it up. This year, you know, you're going to be seeing guys like Trevor Baptiste and Matt Rambo, um, Justin Gutterding also in, in the mix with the wings on the practice squad right now, Connor Kelly in San Diego. So you have these Americans who, you know, they don't have a ton of box experience, but I think you're going to see them go out there this year. And I think that they're going to turn some heads. And I think that uh, you know, more America. I mean, the game is growing again in America. I think that the box version of the game um, is really picking up steam here. So we're going to start to see more Americans start to play box a little bit early on, um, you know, and, and these Americans are going to be able to fill up some roster spots. And, you know, even though they haven't been playing it their whole lives, like, you know, the Canadians have, um, you know, I, I think that they're going to fit in pretty well here. So, you know, between giving more uh, opportunities for Americans and, you know, given the Canadians who just haven't been able to find themselves on a roster yet, like the NLL has room to grow because the talent is out there. The talent level across all of lacrosse has never been higher than it is right now. But there's only, you know, there's only nine or well, there's 11 NLL teams. There's going to be 13. There's only six PLL teams. There's only so many MLL teams. So like there's so much talent in the sport of lacrosse, but so few pro teams. Um, so, you know, there, there's definitely room for the NLL to grow there and to also, uh, you know, keep the talent level either where it's at or even better. Um, 
Actually, I, I, so I mentioned his name while I went on that little rant there. Uh, but one thing that I am really going to be keeping my eye on with this new team in New York is a guy like Tom Schreiber. Uh, you know, Tommy, he's from the island. Uh, so this will be his hometown team. I don't know what his contract sitch is like with Toronto right now. But I have to imagine that if the opportunity's there, Tom Schreiber would love to go home to play for this New York team. And if you can start a... Uh, you know, if you could start an expansion team and build around Tom Schreiber, that's fucking money right there. I mean, you, you don't really even need to go through the rest of the expansion draft. I mean, just bring in whoever you want with him uh, and, and you're going to be pretty successful. So, um, you know, and I'm sure that uh, USA lacrosse would definitely love to have Captain America uh, kind of rip him away from a Canadian team and, and put him back in New York. So, you know, that's definitely a, a name that you should keep an eye out on. I, I think... Even if it doesn't happen for the inaugural season, I think that there's definitely a uh, great chance that Tom Schreiber will end up on that New York team eventually at, at one point or another. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to look forward to with that team in New York, and there's a lot to look forward to in the future with how the NLL uh, continues to grow, um, you know, continues to get, you know, new ownership. And even with Vancouver, I mean, they, they got bought by the Canucks. There's more money into the league now, um, you know, so they got stealth get bought by the vancouver canucks you know they changed their team name they changed their jerseys still the same team but now they have that ownership backing of an nhl team so uh you know the the more that you know this this league continues to grow uh, i think that that's kind of a testament to where lacrosse is at right now i mean there's money to be made in this sport uh, and fortunately the players are starting to get paid as well so uh it's it's only up from here so definitely things to look forward to in the future but in the more immediate future, we have week one and the 2018-19 NLL season to get us going. And before we talk about that, let's, uh, you know, let's check in with the reigning NLL MVP and uh, from the reigning champs of Saskatchewan Rush. Let's kick it over to our interview with Mark Matthews. All right, and thanks again to Mark for hopping on with us. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, the the rush, they don't get started until, you know, they still have another couple weeks here to uh, settle in here before they get their season started against New England. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think that they'll be chomping at the bit to go for the repeat, their second repeat in, in five years. Uh, so, you know, unless my Philadelphia Wings have anything to say about that, but the rush, I mean, they're a fucking wagon. They're absolutely loaded. Uh, I mean, Mark, they had the top two point scores in the league last year. Matthew setting that assist record, Robert church, just lighting the lamp like a goddamn lunatic. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think that there's any reason to see the rush have any sort of drop off this season. Uh, so yeah. You know, we'll, we'll talk more about them in, in the next couple of weeks as their season actually gets going. Uh, but for now, let's do it. Our first NLL preview, the inaugural NLL preview on the crease dive. It feels great. I mean, it, it feels fan fucking tastic. Uh, you know, if anyone's been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that myself, I'm a Philly guy. I have been dying 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 for the philadelphia wings to come back into our lives here in the city of philadelphia and it's happening tomorrow i cannot fucking wait 1 p.m saturday december 15th at the wells fargo center i will see all of you beautiful beautiful souls there uh if you are going to be at the game tomorrow make sure you let me know on twitter at barstool jordy hit me up let me know where you're going to be tailgating let's slug some beers let's get wild let's get in one Let's get crazy for the wings because it is going to be a party in South Philadelphia tomorrow. Uh, and that barn is going to be rocking. The city has been waiting for years for this team to come back. And now it's finally happening. Unfortunately, they are, well, they're starting off with, uh, I mean, uh, this is one of the toughest teams that I think that the Wings could have drawn for their first game back in the league uh, because they will be going up against the Buffalo Bandits. Same thing as Saskatchewan. This team is a fucking wagon. I mean, let, let's just rattle off some names here. I mean, Sean Evans, Dane Smith, Josh Byrne, friend of the program, Ian McKay, and Matt Gilray is a couple of rooks. And then on top of all of that, 
they bring in the goalie of the year for six time goalie of the year. He is a certified Hall of Famer, one of the best of all times, Matt Vince. So they got the front door is just loaded. They are going to be pumping, pumping, pumping goals in the back of the net. And then in net themselves, they got one of the best to ever do it in Matt Vince. So I mean, the, the, the wings are kind of going up against the buzzsaw here right away. Uh, they're getting tossed into the deep end right away. Um, you know, so listen, the thing that, that I think is going to be a, a huge factor for the wings in this game is the fact that it's it's their first game. Um, you know, so I think that they're going to be, the boys are going to be buzzing. Uh, the barn is going to be buzzing. So there's going to be a lot of energy at the Wells Fargo Center. I think the fact that this is a home game for the Wings uh, is definitely, definitely, definitely an advantage for them uh, because I think if this game was in Buffalo, it, it'd probably get a little ugly. Um you know, but but Philly, like for an expansion team, I mean, this this offense is no joke. Like there's nothing that anyone can take away from the front door uh, of Philly. I mean, you got veterans like Jordan Hall and, and Kyle Matisse, uh, but then you've got, you know, guys who are just coming into the league for the first time, like Chris Cluche uh, just had him on the podcast a couple weeks ago. If you haven't been able to listen to that episode yet, I suggest you check that out before game one tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, Cluche is I mean he he knows how to pump the back of the net and then we'll see how guys you know like like Matty Rambo do uh in their first NLL action um you know I think it might take Rambo a, a little bit of time to get used to finishing on on the uh on the box goal and I think that you know starting off your first game in the NLL having to go up against Matt Vince is definitely going to be a bit of an issue but you know they have a great blend of you know those veterans like I mentioned with with Hall and Matisse and and then these young guys who are going to have a ton of energy um, who are going to be going all day so as far as as the forwards go for Philly you know it's it's going to be a good game off it's going to be a good season for them offensively I, th I think that they're going to you know they're definitely going to turn some heads they're definitely going to you know score some goals uh, it's, it's just what they have out of the back door and, and in that themselves, that is the biggest question mark. Um, you know, guys who they have running now that, that back door, just, I, they just don't really have many guys who have really proven themselves yet in the NLL and, and especially in cage. Um, now that's not to say that these guys can't come out here and surprise a bunch of people and put on, you know, just a shutdown effort. Um, but the same way where it kind of sucks with, you know, Rambo having to play his first NLL action against uh, a goalie like Matt Vince, you know, it's going to be a little tough for, for these D guys, uh, to, to have their first game of the season going up against, you know, guy like Dane Smith, uh, who, you know, fills the back of the net, a guy like Sean Evans, who's just a stunt. And then, you know, obviously in McKay is, uh, you know, he, <laughs> we've talked to him quite a bit and, uh, yeah, I, I think that he's definitely going to want to put on a show, uh, in, in Philly here. Cause we've kind of been, uh, you know, pumping Philly's tires for a while now. And he probably wants to shut us up a little bit. Um, but I, I think that that's, uh, you know, I think the Philly is, is going to have enough energy and juice, uh, you know, with the whole um, first game thing going for them. I, I think that they'll have enough energy and juice to keep this one close. But I, I see this one uh, coming out Buffalo on top. Also, real quick, the thing that scares me the most about the Buffalo Bandits is the fact that they are wearing these throwback sweaters all season long. We preach and preach and preach, look good, feel good, play good on this podcast all the time. And the Bandits look mint crisp in these throwback sweaters um so the fact that they're going with those all season long whoever came up with that idea you know what upper management or equipment managers or whatever whoever came up with the idea to go with those for the full season they deserve a raise uh also i fuck i didn't even mention josh burn that whole time <laughs> fuck all right that's gonna be a tough one for the wings but hey they're gonna keep it close and it's gonna be a fun game to be at so Tomorrow, 1 p.m., December 15th, Wells Fargo Center. See you there, W-I-N-G-S Wings. Later on in the night, it's a 7.05 game. We've got the New England Black Wolves going up against the Georgia Swarm. Now, the biggest note in this game, 
New England going to have to play without Kevin Crowley, and that is, uh, that's going to be an issue because Kevin Crowley led the league in goals last year. He had 51 tucks on the year, and it's going to be pretty difficult for New England to try to uh, you know uh, make up for that lack of production that they will not be seeing on the floor with, with Crowley in a bit of a holdout here. Uh, you know, they... Kevin Buchanan, he, he's he's good. I mean, it just you know Buchanan Crawford, they they have guys who you know are going to be able to get it done. Um, but I, I just you know I think when you're going up against a, a forward group like like Georgia has, you need to be scoring at will. And without Crawley on the floor, I, I don't know if New England's going to be able to do that. Um, you know, I, I don't even really think I have to mention the guys that Georgia has running out of that front door. A uh, little guy named Lyle Thompson, ever heard of him? little guy named Miles Thompson, ever heard of him? Uh, you know, Randy Stats, Brendan Bomberry, Holden Katoni. Uh, you know, I think, ah, fuck, man. I mean, th- this team is going to be, uh, you know, they always are. They're, they are just as, as electrifying as an offense as you can watch. Um, you know, and I think... It, the creativity that they have, obviously, you know, with the Thompson brothers there, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you, you see these guys, you know, you see like a Mark Matthews or you see a Kevin Crowley and yeah, like these guys are, are just putting up numbers and numbers and numbers, but it's, it's a little bit, there's, there's more technique to it. Uh, but with, with the Thompsons and with what Georgia does here, um, you know, it's just all oh, it's it, the creativity. It's just that, like, that's what you want to, that's like the shit that gets on sports center i mean it, it's just uh you know it's smooth it's silky and you know i think without crawley on the floor for new england that's gonna be a, a, a tough uh you know if that one just turns into a pissing match at, at forward you know with these offenses i think that georgia out pisses new england if that makes sense um you know they kind of don't want to get in a race with those guys uh because they there's no slowing up so I think that Georgia will come out on that one pretty handedly, uh, you know, until until the Big Cat ends up back in New England. And then the final game of the weekend, we've got the Vancouver Warriors going up against the Calgary Roughnecks. Similar thing with New England. Um, so Calgary, it looks like they will be without Westberg and Curtis Dixon. Uh, so Berg, he had... Uh, what, what, what did he have last year? He had 37 tucks. Curtis Dixon had 47. So right there, if my math is correct, that is what, like 84 goals that they will be down in Calgary. Uh, so that, again, that that's going to give Vancouver. Now, Vancouver's a team where, you know, I, I don't think people have many expectations for them. They're, you know, they're kind of in a, in a rebuild mode a little bit here. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, they've got Logan Schuss, but, uh, you know, Logan's a friend of the program, but they don't really have too much around him. So, you know, he doesn't have a ton of <coughs> a ton of help at, at forward there. So, um, you know, I, I think with with Berg and, and Curtis Dixon out of this game, um, you know, if they're still holding out by by Saturday at 9 p.m., or I guess, you know, whatever that is in whatever the fuck time zone Calgary's in, uh, well, then, you know, I, I think that, you know, low scoring game, uh, works pretty well for Vancouver. Um, now, the only thing is, like, not only is it going to be a low-scoring game because Vancouver doesn't have a, a ton to help out Logan Schuss, but it's also going to be a low-scoring game because Calgary has the goalie of the future in Christian Del Bianco. Uh, this kid is, you know, he's 21 years old, and he's already just been tearing it up i mean he's a minto cup champ he came into the nll at at 18 um i mean this kid is a fucking wall so you know i think it was going to be low scoring for vancouver anyway uh but the you know the good news for them is that maybe calgary can't quite uh you know make up those goals that they'll be missing in westberg and, and curtis dixon um you know you still got you know jesse king zach courier tyson bell i mean you know, guys who can, you know, who, who can take it up the floor and, and fill the back of the net themselves. But uh, I, I like a low scoring game here. And and with that, you know, kind of the same thing with Philly. I think that Vancouver, 
Uh, it's a team that has a lot to prove, and even though they're not an expansion team, I mean, even though they're you know the same team as the Stealth last year, you know they got a new ownership group, they got a new name, so I mean they're basically, you know, they're kind of they're they're a newish, they're a new team, just you know guys who have been playing on the team before. Um, but I think that you know they have a, a there's pride on the line here, and especially with so many people already counting them out as you know being toward the bottom of the league. You know, I think that they're going to want to come out here and and put a, a statement game together to start off the season. So, um, you know, I, I think that they could probably catch Calgary sleeping a little bit. And well, not sleeping, um, you know, because Calgary is obviously going to be ready to go, especially with the home opener for them. Uh, but I think that they can, you know, have in Calgary this week with uh, Berg and Dixon still out could be could be pretty good for Vancouver. So you know what? I think that that'll be the one, uh, you know, the one quote unquote well yeah definitely that'll be the one upset that i picked this week so give me vancouver over calgary give me georgia over the black wolves and uh unfortunately give me the bandits over the wings but you know that listen obviously i'm gonna be cheering for the wings but like i've got a reputation to uphold here as a big j journalist i gotta stay a little unbiased here uh you know i don't know if i'm going for my record then I, I, I'll take the bandits over the wings, but still going to be buzzing there at the Wells Fargo Center tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so those are my picks for this week. We've got Buffalo, Georgia, and Vancouver. Those are the three games of the week. Uh, good news is, uh, so no for like, so the all the games in the NLL will be broadcasted on Bleacher Report Live. Now listen, fuck Bleacher Report, obviously. There's nothing I can do about it, all right? So obviously they're competitors, but they have the game, so whatever. The good news, you don't have to give them your money just yet because all three games this weekend will be streaming live for free, free 99 on Bleacher Report Live. And then after that, they're gonna, you know, fuck you over and, and make you pay money for the rest of the season. I think it's like, uh, you know, it might be like $40 for a league pass for the whole year. So um, again, as, as much as I hate, Bleacher Report getting money off of lacrosse because, you know, they don't give a fuck about lacrosse. You know, we're out here. Barstool, we're grinding our dicks off with this podcast week after week after week after week. Um, but, you know, I guess the end of the home, they said, oh, fuck you guys. Like, we're going to Bleacher Report. So, listen, I'm not salty about it. You shouldn't be salty about it. I wish you didn't have to give Bleacher Report money, but, you know, you don't this weekend. So, the games are for free. Bleacher Report Live. Buffalo at Philly at 1 p.m., New England at Georgia at 7.05 p.m., Vancouver at Calgary 9 p.m. Those are all Eastern Standard Time because Eastern Time fucking rules the world. And never forget that. That's the motto for today's episode, boys and girls. Eastern Time or die. And until then, low to high to the day we die, we out.